Epic Games is lazy, and I have some reasons as to why. Hey howdy, how's it going? My name is VengiePie, and before we get into this video, I want to preface by saying this is going to be a lot of ranting, but while ranting, I will be coming up with solutions to a lot of the issues that I bring up. So this isn't going to be something like a nothing burger, and instead we'll actually have some sort of solution. But anyways, after looking through most of the recent battle pass as of recording this, if you're someone watching this month later, I am so sorry. I hope that this season got better. But I began to realize how little Epic actually cares about the stuff that they put out. Unless it's collab content, or just collabs in general, most of the things that are based in just Fortnite, like the Fortnite universe, are incredibly lackluster. In this video, we'll be talking about the Battle Pass, OG Fortnite, seasonal events, and live events, and some other things in between, I don't know. <laughs> Now, because it's what I mentioned to start this video, the current battle pass of Chapter 5 Season 4, we have this spray right here, twice. And also the main style for Mysterio's pickaxes and the bonus rewards, that's something that personally bothers me, and, and they've done this like five other times. Now, a lot of people view this as nitpicking, and others will say that, well, yeah, the devs are already aware of this issue. Guess what? It still hasn't been changed. And if it has, I will put something right on the screen. But if not, I would like to point it out, because this could have been something else. Some other item would have been very cool. Ever since the format for battle passes have changed, and you could spend your battle star, battle point, battle thing, whatever the fuck these are. Epic took away a lot of the things that you would originally be able to earn. This is what the original battle pass used to look like. Notice how there are two layers and sometimes you can earn double on certain tiers. You can't do that anymore because it's all in one continuous line. In the main battle pass, not the bonus or quest rewards, you can earn exactly 100 items, including V-Bucks and free items. In a battle pass like chapter one, season four, you can earn over 120 different items. Now, yes, some some of these include XP bonuses and challenges for skins, but you are still earning 120 different things. With Chapter 5 Season 4's Battle Pass, and many of the ones before it, these menus and everything are just set up in a way to make you believe that you are getting way more compared to years ago, but you're not. Bonus rewards are just the extra items that we should be getting in the main 100 tiers of the Battle Pass, while the quest rewards are sort of the same. For the bonus rewards, we used to have something back in Chapter 1 called Overtime Quests. These allowed you to get extra styles to some of the skins that you had in that battle pass. Obviously, they have fiddled with the idea for a while since we've gotten the golden styles for, you know, people like Midas. Then eventually it turned into super styles where you just got three different colors based on how far you got in levels. The main issue here is now with the current battle pass, the only way to feel like you actually completed the battle pass by getting to a little bit over 200. I don't know if it's actually level 200 or not. Not for sure on that. It could be like 240. I don't remember. In my opinion, there are many ways to deal with this issue. First, you would need to add challenges for skins back because we don't have that in the current battle pass and we should be getting that every single season. Allow there to be more room in the first 100 tiers so that we aren't just earning styles for a couple of pages. An example of this is we get War Machine and then we get Iron Patriot. We could have had something else in this slot instead of just an extra style. And make it so that these super styles are just based on levels and don't require you to spend stars. Instead of bonus rewards, you could merge everything from quest rewards and bonus rewards all into one space. Then the quest rewards section could be either a new skin, similar to the secret skin, or I don't even know, like maybe like a car or whatever, in which we wouldn't be able to know what or who it was until the week of those challenges go out. Or it could be dedicated to a collab skin. I don't know. Obviously within this current battle pass being Marvel, this wouldn't exactly work because obviously Epic isn't going to make a big change to their UI. This is just an idea for the future. And of course, we have Dr. Doom, who is technically the bonus skin this season, but he doesn't feel much like a bonus skin at all. In this battle pass, we have two skins that are just fake. They aren't actual Marvel skins and they're just a mashup, which in my opinion could go in the new quest reward section since they are sort of factored into the story. And we could have gotten many other characters in the battle pass instead of Peely and Jonesy, but we only received five actual Marvel skins compared to the original Marvel season in which we had a total of seven. If you factor in the bonus skin, those numbers go up by one. I wouldn't bring this up if Jonesy and Peely's skin were replaced with something that was an actual Marvel character like the Human Torch or the Thing. Oh wait, they're probably going to put that in the item shop, who fucking knows. Obviously they can't change this now, but Jonesy and Peely should have been a completely different character from Marvel and not a mashup, and most of the pages in the Battle Pass should have been different characters and not just a new style. This is something that sort of stirred the pot in terms of me thinking in depth of how Epic has been a little lazy. Last year we received OG Fortnite, an entire month where we were able to play on the original map once again and revisit all of those amazing memories that we had during that time. But there was something that bothered me when it came to playing it. The graphics and designs of pretty much everything was not what it was in back in chapter one. A lot of people would say, well, it's because this was just a remix season or it's a different timeline. But I feel like Epic did not care enough to make it an almost one-to-one -one recreation of chapter one. 
one. Most of the gun models are from Chapter 2 onward, and even things like the lighting and colors are just not what they were back in Chapter 1. There was supposed to be a bunch of mini little events and changes to the map that reflected the seasons of Chapter 1, but all we got is pretty much just what Reload is getting right now. Weapons were getting unvaulted and vaulted for the entire month, every week. It was leaked that we were supposed to get a Kevin the Cube event, where it went around the map again, but that never happened. When Kevin the Cube became a floating island, it wasn't even reactive like how it used to be. These were just all creative assets. The snow biome didn't have Polar Peak and only Frosty Flights, plus it was a much smaller of a biome. Greasy Grove wasn't even frozen over. On top of this, the monster in the ice was already broken out, which that has to do with the story, but still, it kind of made Polar Peak like bigger. We were supposed to get stuff based around season 7 to 8, but there was no volcano at the top right of the map, and overall, certain smaller places were just completely Overlook. This made the season feel like a creative map, which the new reload game mode is pretty much just that. For anyone saying that they probably deleted all the old graphics, the movement, or the models, I'm going to show you two things that are current within the game. Save the World and Party Royale. Now, I personally love Save the World, but Party Royale has old movement and uses older graphics from like Chapter 3 before they just stopped supporting it, sort of, while Save the World has every single gun model in the game, from the OG pump and even the sounds. I think Epic was was planning the OG season for quite a bit, but it's clear that the OG season was to bring as many people back because they knew that they were losing a lot of players. Others like myself stopped playing because it didn't feel like actual Fortnite, obviously chapters before. I wish we got more from Chapter OG because when Chapter 2 OG comes around, it's gonna be the same thing, a month of season 1, 2, and 3 of Chapter 2, but like Chapter 1 OG, it's gonna suck. And since we're on the topic of trying to bring players back by cashing in the nostalgia checks, it's a great time to acknowledge something that I've brought up already in this conversation. Reload. I believe if Reload didn't release at all, and Epic didn't even try to begin with, Chapter 5 Season 3 would have killed this game. If it wasn't for the current Marvel season catering to the even trashier players, a lot of people would have signed off. Reload is also undergoing issues like not having a trios or solos mode yet, and it seems pretty simple in what they need to do for each of them. Clearly, Epic took a lot of inspiration from Rebirth or Resurgence from Call of Duty because it's quite literally the same exact thing in premise. Apparently what they want to do is allow players and solos to spawn back as many times as they have gotten kills. Meaning, if you got one kill in your life and then died, you can reboot once. And then if you kill more people, that's as many times as you can reboot before the reboot timer is done. And I think that this is a terrible idea, and Epic should just fully copy Call of Duty and make it so that players need to wait roughly like 30 seconds or something like that to receive a reboot token so that they can come back again, or you can pick up something that has it. I don't fucking know. On top of this, they also need to put in spawn protection. For, I don't understand why, but when you're rebooted, you can just be slapped out of the air. And especially when you're in much, like, better lobbies, this is an issue. I know people who, you know, console players and they play, like, once every year don't have this issue. Now, for trios, it's it's pretty clear on <laughs> what they need to do. It's actually, like, the, probably the most simplest thing. Longer respawns than duos, quicker respawns than squads. Very self-explanatory. And something that has bothered me a lot in Reload is the fact that it's considered to be a map based on Chapter 1. Most of the guns are from Chapter 1. One. But we get weapons that are unvaulted, like the heisted weapons or the mammoth pistol, which in my opinion is terrible and ruins the simplicity of reload. Completely throws it all out of whack. On top of this, a lot of the places aren't a one-to-run recreation. We have Little Loot Lake and shit like that, which I think is fucking stupid. Just make the actual place. Stop inputting these random creative assets. I don't get it. But honestly, the best way to spice up reload is every month or something. Change the island from chapter one to two to three to four to five and repeat this forever. Many versions of course. Not the largest part, like not the big big island. We want small island. And in the weeks, vault and unvault certain weapons from that chapter or the seasons within those chapters. They also had the original pump on the loading screen for OG Fortnite when it first launched. They actually took this away eventually when uh, they were doing some like age rating shit, which that was also a really terrible idea. All right, seasonal events. They are pretty much just, you know, the holidays and stuff like that, like No Sweat Summer, Fort Nightmares, uh, Winterfest. All of these things are seasonal events, uh, but just to clarify. And the very first thing that we're going to bite straight in the ass is Winterfest. It is evident that Epic went from having this awesome idea to give out free stuff during Christmas time to eventually dwindling it down to just logging in and looking at a shitty ass menu. I will say this once again. People say that this is nitpicking, and for some reason we should just be thankful that Epic still gives us free stuff during 
during this time. I will say that the coolest part of like 2023 was that Loot Island was reskinned to be Crackshot's cabin. That was the only interesting part of it really. And the reboot van was also on there, which was even better. Most of the Loot Islands don't do that. But we didn't get to have Crackshot's cabin be in the menus to look around and find little Easter eggs like in the previous years. My main point here is that Epic set a standard and with things like Crackshot's cabin, they can't just give us a shitty version of it. Do it right. The whole vibe of Christmas is kind of there when you're in Crackshot's cabin. The music that's there and everything. It doesn't feel like it's Christmas time when there's literally nothing. It feels corporate. And back in 2022, we had at least some cool new idea of having Santa go around the map and throw presents at people. I thought that was fun, which honestly, they must have thought that that was too good of an idea because they bound Santa to a little island at the top of the map away from literally everything to the point where some people didn't even know that he existed. There was also no decorations around the map at all. The same thing happened with Fort Nightmares. Barely any, if any, decorations around the map were present. The event itself was kind of botched. They added Horde Rush again, but they did nothing new with it. They unvaulted things like candy in the witch's room while adding a new weapon called the Woodstake Shotgun. At least I think it's new. I that's They have that as a part of their patch notes, so I think it's new. But don't worry, Epic put all their effort into the collab skins. Granted, they are really good looking. I do like them. But the skins were the only interesting part of Fort Nightmares for 2023. The previous years had just more in terms of making it feel like it was Halloween time. There was also clearly much more effort put into the patch notes from 2023 to 2022. It, it, it's night and day. Then there's other little things like other events that we have had before, like No Sweat Summer or like 14 Days of Summer. Random little challenge things that happen. They're just kind of ass. It's sort of the same thing over and over again, and it's not interesting at all. All it is is just to earn XP. Most of the time when you earn items, it's like a pickaxe and that is it. And the pickaxe doesn't even look good. Sometimes it can be a glider, still doesn't look good. Sometimes it can be a wrap or a spray, also sucks ass. Not interesting at all. But overall, it just kind of feels like how the current Marvel season is, where you know that it's Marvel, similar to like, all right, I know it's Halloween, but it doesn't feel like you're actually in that like genre or something, you know? It doesn't feel like you're in Halloween. It doesn't feel like you're in, in Marvel. It doesn't, I don't feel like I'm marveling it out. One of the things that people look forward to at the end of a season, not end of a chapter, was the in-game live events. The very first one, believe it or not, I didn't even get to see. My mom came home with groceries and made me get off, so I had to rewatch it in replay mode. But the first event was the rocket taking off and creating a rift in the sky. For Fortnite at the time, no one knew what the hell was going on. This was insane, and it was awesome, and everyone got to experience it, and I also think someone got, like, a kill record by killing a bunch of people. Um... I'm showing it on the screen. It's pretty crazy. I don't think it ever counted though, like as like a Guinness Book of World Record thing or whatever, because it, it was during a weird, I don't know. I don't know why they didn't count it. But then in the next season, we had Kevin the Cube, which was pretty much all season. He went around the map, kind of fucked shit up. Then eventually went to Loot Lake, turned it into the Thanos Lake, I think some people called it. It was bouncy. People made some cool videos with that. And then finally, we saw what happened to Kevin in season six, where the Loot Lake Island in the middle became a floating island and then proceeded to go around the map. Another the notable event would be the mech fighting the monster in season 9. All of these events were amazing, then eventually this changed. We went from seeing these amazing moments to sitting in a little creative map and gathering coins and hoping something happens. I fucking hated this event. I don't even know what year this was. I found the gameplay after the fact because I'm reading a script right now. I hated this event so much because I sat here, I don't even know for how long, but it felt like an hour. Then at the end of chapter OG, the live event was actually supposed to be much longer with Eminem having an insane concert planned. It would have definitely probably been better than Travis Scott, maybe maybe it came close, I don't know, but it would have been act actually something, but we were cut short and instead just got to see all the bullshit that Epic was trying to advertise to the player base. And I hope that that's clear to a lot of people. That was the only reason why that event even happened happened. It was to show Lego, it was to show racing, and it was to show festival, the music festival stuff. Without that, didn't mean anything. There was also supposed to be like, you know, sports. That didn't happen, because fuck you, why would, why would Epic want to try something new? Then in chapter 5, the current chapter, Epic decided to make a big deal out of almost nothing, several times. We saw a couple things explode last season, and it was teased that it was Doctor Doom behind all of it. But I feel like everyone kind of already knew that the Wanderer, which was this guy right here, we already knew who the fuck he was, we knew what he was doing, we understood what was going to happen, everything was leaked, so it didn't matter. It's all readily available online. It's not hard to find this stuff out, especially with TikTok being prominent. Like, you, this isn't crazy for people to find out, like, all of these leaks. And then we've had things like Metallica do their concert and Carol G, Kid Leroy. These fucking suck. Like, I'm sorry. These are terrible. 
Carol G's I felt like was a little bit cooler because I, I like I was there for that one. Kid Leroy's not that interesting. Metallica's I was there for that. That one sucked ass. That one was just walking around simulator and that sucked major dick. But Travis Scott will somehow since chapter two of Fortnite, since chapter two, will continue to be the best concert of all time. That's not a good thing. Why? why? There's so many different I like you could have done something cool with the island it's always just do something with the island and the only reason we got the regular live events was because the story that epic was creating behind the scenes but ever since donald mustard left the game has been in a very large large state of decline and now obviously just saying that epic is lazy and bringing up the issues doesn't do anything besides beat a dead horse at this point because i feel like everyone has said it but when you really put it into perspective of all the stuff it kind of makes a little bit more sense but i want it to be understood that epic can do a lot with very little they have done this before but players excusing these issues by saying well it's just a game or well i'm enjoying it so i don't care that's just incredibly ignorant i'm someone who advocates for things like simplicity in fortnite like even with the item shops or the loot pool but ever since we have gotten the new creative director for fortnite and things have just clearly changed in terms of goals and morals for epic games it's very evident that they just won't ever care that much again and the only way to get them to care is by not playing their game which in this case not really going to happen fortnite is not something that other games can just create it's a one in a million in terms of the gameplay and art style granted the art style may have gotten a bit you know shittier at certain points it's much worse from when it first was created but the message of this video is as a community in anything as a greater number of people you can decide what happens to a lot of things and that type of power should be valued and understood very deeply remember when the hell divers community got sony to back down not never what i do plan on making a video about nick 30 again by the way i don't know if you've seen that video holy fucking shit all right that's like off topic but jesus but Getting Sony to like stop doing what they were doing and revert some of their changes, obviously there's a little bit of issues there, but getting them to sort of back down was not something that just a couple people said, I'm gonna stop playing and that stopped them from doing that. It was because a lot of people all united for one simple thing, change. This doesn't just apply for video games, but in this case, I am using it for that. Just know that I care a lot about Fortnite because I have played this in its earliest years, not like 2011, but 2017. I have seen how good this game can be and I just want that to happen again. Now, time to sell out. I have another channel called Benji Pie Live, which will be shown at the end of this video and will be in the description as well. I post pretty much anything there that's not just ranting or commentaries like how you see right here. It's like a little playground. I just try out new shit, just do whatever I want, really. And if you want to see, you know, gaming with friends, funny moments, whatever, literally anything, but just revolved around me as a person, if that's who you're interested in, go check that out. Show it some love. I think there's two videos already on there and they're just Roblox, but that's just because that was why I was playing with my friends. I plan on doing much more. There will also be like stream highlights and things like that eventually, but I haven't streamed yet. I'm also trying to reach 10,000 subscribers before the end of this year. So if you like commentaries like this video or things on video games or whatever, fuck. I'm also trying to reach 10,000 subscribers before the end of this year. So if you like commentaries or commentaries on video games or something, stay tuned and also consider subscribing. And if you've already subbed before or you just want to stick around or something like that and you want to contribute more or something, I don't know, like the video or comment something down below. Let me know your thoughts on this video. It really, it could be anything. But the only reason that I ask is because it just helps the video do better, makes me want to make more videos for you guys and keep you entertained. That's, it's a win-win, you to me, winning win. We both win. We both look at each other, dab each other up. It's a solid clap. And I appreciate all of you who watch my videos. And to show that appreciation, when we hit 10,000, I will most likely make a Discord but don't be surprised if I don't interact in it. I actually, I don't necessarily, I don't fuck with discords like that. It can be a little weird, but I know that a lot of people have come to my channel for stuff save the world related, so I will be making more videos like that perhaps, and also just it could be a place for people to say, hey, I need people to play with, and then you friend each other or some shit, I don't care. But anyways, hope you guys have a great day, night, week, month, whole rest of the year. It really doesn't matter when it is, but I hope that's great for you guys though. See ya.